Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of November 30th. Hope that you navigated the first round of the holidays well. I've got a real treat for you this week. I have in the studio with me, Jamie on our team and Morgan. Because Jamie and Morgan are in a similar situation with many of you, and that is school. And suddenly, well, not even suddenly, the roller coaster ride that everyone who is a parent or grandparent has been on in the fall, and now here with another round of lockdowns around the world and suddenly finding their kids at home. So we thought we would have a conversation with some empathy and some help to all you folks out there that are navigating another round of quarantine, particularly with children and with schooling. So welcome to the podcast, guys. Good to be with you. I want to hear a little bit of the story because I'm not parenting in this hour. Our sons are grown and our grandchildren are still littles and they're not at school yet. So What's it been like? You know, because we got through the summer and it felt like everything was, wasn't was back on track. But the kids were back in school in fall? Well, we were hopeful. And it, yeah. An <laughs> ishy version of old normal, right? Yeah. Mostly sort of partly in, in-person learning, changing by the day, changing yeah. by the email. You just don't know. Describe that for right? me. Well, oh, yeah. So our version, of, I think I just want to say for the listeners, it's hard. Mm. It's hard. It's messy. And it's very particular. It's very particular. I don't think there's two people that have the same experience. Yeah. And that even makes it more fatiguing and lonely. But even walking into work today. So I walk in, I'm one of the first here, but there's a few others. And I realized the ratio, there were more kids to <laughs> employees than the outpost today. Because Jamie had her kids and Alex had his kids. And it's just circumstance, right? Some came to help because they don't have, they're online. And other kids don't have the caregiving. And there's a lot of kids. And so I said, Jamie, I was actually talking to Jamie's little Bella and said, it would actually be better for you all to do the podcast today because you have the better stories. She wasn't interested, but then I did find another child. I won't name them. They asked me not to name them. And I said, hey, this is a teenager. I said, give me some advice. I I, I need a story for the podcast. If you could speak to thousands of parents today and just give them one piece of advice on our situation, our predicament, what would you say to those parents? And she said, well, I would say if my mom could just pretend more that I'm not home. And I just went, wow. wait a second. And it was, again, news to me where it's like in that home, in that situation, that child just needs some space to get it done because she has a system. And mom is trying to be overly helpful, right? We're all trying to navigate yeah. and it's changing by the day. Yeah. So when you started out in the fall, it was some in-person learning, some your schools were open? Yeah, with a lot of precautionary things set up, um, we decided to stay in our school with the hope that there would hopefully be more in-person learning than there would be at home, but knowing that it was a very real reality that they're likely to spend some time at home, maybe short-term, maybe long-term. The first cough. Right. The first kid with the sniffles, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And were were your kids able to go back into a classroom? So it was uh, mostly in person, and then they quickly found out some kids could opt for online learning, and that was a debacle. And so teachers are now doing double time, right? They have this whole online world, then they have an in-person world. And we get notice that our cousins in Indiana actually are in person, but they have to carry a clear plexiglass trifold to every classroom and put it around their desk. Wow. So, you know, those kind of trifold art boards that every yeah. kid used yeah. and they have a shield. So my little Abigail, middle schooler and high schooler, my Abigail, she's in, in person learning. And then one day she gets pulled out of class all of a sudden 
And they said, you know, everything they're carrying, so there's no lockers now, so they carry their gym clothes, they carry their after-school stuff, they carry every book they own, they carry their lunch, and then one day she's told, get on the curb and sit, and your parents are coming to get you, and there were like 35 other kids, and it was the first quarantine. Some kid had COVID, and they extradited the kids from the school. She sat on the rocks for two hours until Mm. one of us parents could get there. And then that turned into now it's been a month mm-hmm. from then. So that quarantine of 14 days turned into the next kid, turned into a total school shutdown. Oh, you're kidding. So she never went back. She literally left her lunch in third period and hasn't been back. Oh, that sandwich is nasty <laughs> now. <laughs> so that's just an example of everyone has it so unique and it changes by the day and it makes for crazy making. And, mm-hmm. and what about sports? What's been happening with like that? We aren't involved in school sports at the moment. Um, my son is, is does have extracurricular activity, but it's all outside of the school. And so far, we've been lucky, and they are still going in person. Last to time, like club sports, or yes, that kind of to thing. club sports. They okay. have limited class size and masks. Um, but it, we're at least in person still at this point. Last um, spring, it was dance lessons over Zoom <laughs> for my daughter. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, for us, sports are a big part of our high school life. And it was wild. Abigail had her first day of track practice ever for middle school, and she was so excited. And then the next day, it shut down. You know, Joshua passionate about lacrosse and worked really hard. One of three kids to make varsity as a freshman in the second practice, they're told we're we're done. Right. And then football for fall on off, on off. Do we move it? And it was the drama and God bless these coaches. God bless the athletic director. Everyone's doing their best. Yeah. But it was, we're on, we're off, we're on. It got punted to spring. So now it's sandwiched in spring. And then most of the teams, at least our County, last week announced they're done. So they're halfway through the season, four Mm -hmm. games left, playoffs, it's all over. And so now actually what football consists of is right now Joshua has a Zoom call with the team for an hour and a half every Wednesday. Wow. Like a Zoom call. In order for teenagers. To do what? To work on plays oh, to get ready for the season. Okay. But it's like, what What has it become? What has it become? <laughs> well, that's what, that's the empathy we want to bring to our listeners because there's a lot of folks working with really tough situations now. And now, I guess, all your kids are home yep. now. My son is back right now. Which is it, elementary. Right? Yeah. He's oh, an, really? Maybe we should also say like yeah, for, yeah. for the listeners, because um, I know that everyone's in a different spot. I have a third grade son who is dyslexic. I work part time, thankfully at a very flexible organization. And then I have a daughter who's in seventh grade and they both have their struggles or even sometimes their likes of being home. So my son has had one um, like two-week long quarantine where the whole elementary school was shut down, but then they went back. And then he's had a couple days here or there where we get a call at night saying there's uh, suspected symptoms of COVID related to your son's cohort class, so he's not coming to school tomorrow, but then we'll get the call the next day or maybe in a couple days. Oh, that's all clear. Send them back the next day. <laughs> so there's not a lot of consistency yeah. right mm-hmm. now for for me as a parent and I'm sure for a mm-hmm. lot of the parents out there. Yeah. My daughter um, is now out doing only at-home learning now through the holidays. So she won't go back until January, we think, we hope that that's mm-hmm. the case. Yeah. And and what is this like as parents? Like name name the challenges mm, here. The inconsistency probably for me is the biggest challenge. If I need to wrap my head around homeschooling my dyslexic son for two weeks, like I can get there. But it's almost like I get angry when they're like, no, send them back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I think, oh, I was just, I had just like gotten to a place with some plans and some scheduling and now I, I'm finding myself upset, not because he's getting to go back to school. That's actually a positive thing in his case, but because there's no form of 
I know what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what we're going to be doing tomorrow wow. is, is the reality. Wow. Yeah. And then, of course, juggling being a working parent and switching back and forth from a normal work schedule to work happens around school, which happens around some Zoom calls and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm in a pretty fortunate position that I am part-time and I have more flexibility with when I get my work done, but I know that not every parent is in that position. And yeah. so my heart goes out to them uh, to like, how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How about in your house? What's the challenge? Yeah, well, it's interesting, John. I appreciate Jamie, as you said, just the unpredictability of it. It changes by the day between sports, activities, school, quarantines. But what I'm struck by in our actual home is it's not just the kids, it's us as well. You know, so we have a middle schooler, Abigail, who's 13, and Joshua, who's 16. And Sherry, my wife, teaches within with four different organizations, and then she teaches privately. And so all of a sudden, a lot of those courses are online, and she's teaching on Zoom. And then I was home in the first lockdown, and then I just got off my COVID quarantine. And today's day one, first day back in the office. So the last 14 days, I've been at home on Zoom. So you have four people navigating either online learning via Zoom or Schoology. And so like tonight, I'm installing a heater in my garage for the winter conversion to make my garage an office because we have four people and we have our cell phone. We have a program called Speedify to get enough bandwidth out of our cell phones, a hard line internet and wireless just to keep the ship running, and we're not technology people. (laughs) Yes. It's insane. Right? I mean, I hadn't even thought about that. All those people snagging the bandwidth. Oh, yeah. mm. And the one space that you could do a professional Zoom because you don't want, you know, the kitchen mixer bowl in the back and someone needs lunch. (laughs) I've got this football player. All he does is want to eat. And Abigail needs her friend time. So she's on one phone with a friend, a cousin in Indiana, to keep her company while they're both doing school. And I have a publishing meeting. And so I race to the garage and I'm I'm trying not to shake because I'm so cold. And we're trying to do normal life. (laughs) And and now it's getting worse, right? The world is locking pretty hardcore back down in some states Mm -hmm. pretty severely, Mm -hmm. almost draconian in it. And so all these parents, and bless these teachers, Mm -hmm. who did not expect to be online educators, right? right? Mm-hmm. And so they're having to prepare double types of lesson plans. Right. Oh, yeah. And even navigate, it's no longer homeschool, which is yeah, very different, right? Very It'd be different, different if you were now homeschooling your kids. It's you are trying to coordinate their online version, yes. digital version of some in-school experience that was never built for that. So my daughter's in tears with a very basic question on a bibliography citing where she used to just put a hand up and ask the teacher, yeah. how do I do that? But now there's a there's a Zoom hour, but there's no way to show your work, and she's in tears, mm-hmm. right? And Josh was trying to learn Spanish, a foreign language, from reading documents on a screen. And so, it, again, every person, every version has their different expression, but it's a new normal. See? <laughs> no, no, that's minion, John. No, bueno. That's minion. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so what's helping? As you guys are quarantine round one, mm-hmm. now quarantine round two, kind of expecting there's probably quarantine round three at some point. Mm-hmm. What's helping? What's what's working? What For you and the families you know, how are people kind of finding sanity in this. Mm-hmm. And I think I want to start with you before you go to your kids. Like, okay. what do you need? Right. As parents now suddenly forced into a really tough situation. Right. Other than red wine and dark chocolate, <laughs> what's helping? Yeah. I When we first started this um, this school year, and, and for us, particularly with my son, it was it was a harder decision. Like, do we do? I know that he isn't going to do as well with the back and forth 
However, he gets some really good help in his school um, with his learning disability. Um, and sometimes he just learns a lot better from other people than he does from mom. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know if that uh, resonates with anybody, but it was a hard choice. And, I, and, it, and we knew what we were getting into. We knew that we hope he'll be in school as long as he can, as much as he can. We know that it's probably he'll spend some time at home as well. So I thought that I had prepared myself pretty well. Like I, I'm going to be, I'm going to hold things loosely. I'm going to, um, I'm going to be flexible. I'm going to, you know, just roll with whatever comes. That that is going to be my approach. That sounds so lovely. It, it really, I had. It was such a great plan. We got the first phone call of "You need to come pick up your kids now," and I felt outraged. <laughs> outraged. <laughs> everything, oh. everything that I was going to hold true in this season, like, was out the door, and I was ready to grab a baseball bat and just start hitting something. <laughs> and then the next morning, I thought, "Oh yeah, I was going to be really." cool about this. <laughs> so so how do I get back to that? Like that's actually what I want. And my first response was definitely not that. The, like the first trial, it just yeah. it was all out the door. So I had to spend some I would say probably a few weeks of really deliberately and intentionally thinking through what I need to to be well in this season and to be a really flexible mom who is actually going to roll with whatever is going to happen. Um, And so over those few weeks, uh, what I realized is that if I am doing well and if I have my feet underneath me and I am kind of grounded and secure, then things go better on a day-to-day basis, um, particularly if my kids are at home, than if I feel frazzled and exhausted and negative about anything that's going on. So I just found some, uh, honestly, they seem like kind of simple and inexpensive uh, practices that would help ground me in the mornings before I dove in to family life and work life and school life. And um, those practices, I think they're still in development, but have been super helpful and the days that I have skipped over some some things, some parts of my morning routine have gone less well mm-hmm. than if I really commit to doing just a few simple things. Like what? A People day. are hanging on. Yeah. <laughs> they want to know, what is, help me, Jamie. After what's, this commercial break. <laughs> um, so one of the things is I, I'm an introvert and I really value time to myself and quiet. And I I need a high percentage of that during the day. And as a mom, that's hard to come by. So I started waking up, rather than waking up a short period of time before my kids got up and we got breakfast and whatever the morning routine was going to be, I started waking up anywhere from half an hour to an hour before anyone got up. So it was just me and the dog. And I get, especially if I can do the hour, then I have a whole hour to myself where it's quiet, um, unless I want to listen to a, a podcast. Um, but I, I get up, I make some, um, I boil some water and squeeze half of a lemon into a mug, and I sit on my favorite chair, and I do some version of this fantastic app. I think it's called the Pause app. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I've heard about that. that. Yeah, Before. generally it's a five or ten minute pause app with my lemon water in my chair, just breathing, connecting to God, seeking union with Him. And that in and of itself, if I can't do anything else, I hit that um, right there. But then if I do... Um, have the time and space, then I spend some time connecting with my body in some way. Um, And this isn't like, I'm still in my pajamas, so it's not going for a walk or jog early in the morning, but um, stretching. You're not doing your triathlon training (laughs) in your jammies? (laughs) I did say that this was a progressive um, self-care protocol. So I don't know, maybe that's next month. But right now it's just doing some stretching, some breathing, um, getting upside down, which sounds kind of funny, but um, 
we have a little. It's really funny if you uh, haven't tried it. <laughs> um, just some way to like connect with my body, feel centered in my body. So I've got my mind, my body, my spirit as aligned as I can get them before entering into the chaos of the day. And then sometimes I listen to a podcast. Um, sometimes I listen to some music. Um, whatever I feel like I need for the rest of that morning before we get up and going. I'm struck by the gift you're giving mm-hmm. your family and your world yeah. by choosing 30 minutes yep. of just, yep, dragging yourself out a little bit earlier than you want. Mm-hmm. But what you just described is a gift to the world. Mm. Right. Thanks, Mark. What's working in your house? Like, uh, John, I'd, I'd for say, the grown-ups first. Yeah, I'd say two categories. One of the fascinating, and it took me a while, like you, Jamie, it's progression. Like It took me a while to get here, but the fascinating prayers is God, what is your unique provision in this hour? Mm. And that's a very personal prayer. But like, God is perfectly well. He's perfectly capable. He's not surprised by any of the circumstances we find. And can I add a footnote to that? Sure. Not only is he not surprised, everybody, Mm. but he knew that each of us was going to have to live through this. He knew that. Yes. And so he has a personal provision. He does. For you for your situation, yep. for your family, you know, for work. And I, I can get stuck in the loss, mm-hmm. right? I can get stuck in the what they, uh, so many friends with students that were seniors, right? Yeah. Senior years lost. I mean, the first homecoming was lost yeah. last year for our kids. And that may not be a big deal to me, but it's a big deal to them. And so I can get stuck there. But when I go to provision, John, it's such a shift. For example, one of the things in our family culture that we never had was a daily prayerful kind of devotional connection, right? It's managing our, our schooling system doesn't have buses. And so we have the benefit of carpooling, but it's not our whole family together. So for the last 10 years, we've driven our kids to school. So whoever's going to school, that's a rich time. It's a time of daily prayer, yeah, of right. connection. Mm-hmm. Connecting. It's golden. But we, we rarely other than Sabbath, have the sit down, all four of us, we're going to pray together and orient our day. And in the first lockdown, one of our our peers, Karen, said we started a family Devo in the time. And I felt like the spirit said, that's part of my provision. Mm -hmm. And I had forgotten we could get that back because we're all stuck together. We can find a slot to begin our day. And so it's an example. It's low bar. I'm not talking fancy. We had about a 12-minute devotional today using some kettle corn that a friend had grown and made himself and his family. And we used it as an illustration of what God was doing. So we're eating kettle corn. It's 12 minutes, daily prayer, and everyone goes their way. But we have had this rich time of each person in our family taking a turn. Doesn't happen every day. Things go sideways. We've had COVID but it's been this rich provision. Another example, you know, my son is hardcore fitness and working out and works with multiple teams, multiple gyms, all that's gone. But we've been doing these family workouts and they're so fun. And we have this little collection of different size rocks because we went to buy dumbbells like everyone else did with their gym (laughs) membership money. Yes. You can't buy dumbbells. And, And so we started using rocks. And here we were, and I just thought what other family, what people must think is everyone's walking their dog now, like, mm-hmm. you know, walking the neighborhoods is happening. Couples are walking together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But here we are, Sherry leads us through a stretching and movement class. And then Joshua leads us through a weight training with rocks. Abigail leads us through, you know, an abs workout. And they're low bar and they're simple, but here we are, the four of us working out together. And those were provisions that are really sweet to the hour. And so I've had a lot of joy tuning in, God, what is the particular provision that when this season is over, I'm going to look back and say, we said yes to you. Mm -hmm. Mm, That's so Mm -hmm. good. We could spend three podcasts on what's working for parents. What's helping your kids? Mm -hmm. Unique children with unique learning styles. Your daughter is super self-motivated. Yep. Your son is not, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's the opposite oh, in your situation. <laughs> They're <laughs> different. They're very different. Right? Right? Yeah. Um, what do the kids need? What have you found helpful mm-hmm. during this 
my kids are home, mm-hmm. period, that, that might be helpful to our listeners. Yeah, I, you're right. My kids are, it would be completely different answers for both of them. My daughter is an extrovert, and she is every every teacher's dream student. She's incredibly self-motivated. Um, she gets through her work quite quickly, and and I, I, I wouldn't ever have to say, hey, did you do your science? Because I just know that her science got done this morning, and now she's on with her day. Um, but she's she's incredibly social. She loves school, and she doesn't just love learning. She loves being with her friends, passing people in the hallway. She loves her teachers. She's always good friends with her teachers. So that is her struggle, like the the social aspect mm-hmm. um, now that she's out for a number of months. Um, it is, that's what she needs most is time to socialize as much as COVID allows you to do. So either a small play date um, with her best friend. We've had um, a couple times where she, Ella went over to a friend's house to do school with her friend and they kind of helped each other throughout the, the day with the classes. Um, or we've had to like be a little bit more laxed about technology. So she's now Zooming her friends because she needs, you know, she's a 12-year-old girl. Mm. She needs those those friendship connections. And mm. if it can't be in person, what's the next best thing? Um, and she loves coming here to do um, her schoolwork mm-hmm. because then she's not alone. She's not at home oh, by herself okay. getting her stuff done. She's with the staff of Wild at Heart. Yeah, um, interacting. Yeah, and at a desk. And, <laughs> and so that's special for her okay. too. Um, and then we've had some, you know, chances to grab lunch regularly and um, just have some real um, family connection during the day where we wouldn't, I wouldn't get to see her at lunch. Um you know, while she was at school. Um, and what about your high energy son? Oh. <laughs> you guys made an investment. I saw the photo earlier. Was it earlier this year that you got the trampoline? Yeah, we got a new trampoline that's like a, it's a high end trampoline, one of the rectangle official Olympic um, style trampolines for him. And Used. Used, from a friend. Yes, yeah. and that has been um, a lifesaver. I mean, anything. Here here, here would be my hope for a, a school day with him. And again, we are remote learning. We're not homeschooling, um, which I've learned is just very different. So he has a set of assignments, you know, things that we need to get through and check off the list and submit to the teacher. Um, and in in my head, like, let's knock this out. Like, boom, boom, boom. Like, just uh, write your sentences. Mm-hmm. Let's practice your spelling words. Here's your math. Like, let's get it done before lunch. And then we can, you know, step back and go on with our day. He cannot do that. Mm. I mean, 30 minutes is pushing it. I don't know what he does at school. <laughs> wow. But at home, like he's coming out of his skin, like, you know, I've learned that he cannot sit at the kitchen table and do his schoolwork. So he is standing or he's on like a balance board or he's practicing his spelling words while on our like handstand um I don't know what to call it, this little apparatus that helps you with headstands, the whole getting upside down. So he'll do <laughs> that upside down or while he's playing with a ball or while he's jumping on the trampoline. You can practice multiplication that way. Or on walks with the dogs. You can discuss wow. the, the reptile uh, you know, segment that you're learning. Can, so, I, can I just say, you're actually describing the ideal learning situation for boys. Yes, mm. yes. That, that is how boys were meant to live. Mm. And, and we've had... You know, for all kinds of reasons, we've mm-hmm. had to get them in schools with systems and sit at your desk for long periods of time. Yeah. And, and then when they don't do that, mm-hmm. we've resorted to a lot of um, drugs right. to help them you know, kind of not come out of their skin. So I, yeah, I'm listening to this point. I want that day. <laughs> right. I want that day. I want to bounce on the trampoline and do my work. I want to go for a walk and do my, you know, my yeah. spelling. That's that's helpful yeah. advice. Yeah, it is. So. It might take us until the evening to get through all the official schoolwork Mm -hmm. that we need to get with him. And it's not actually that much, but that is 
that is what it takes. Mm-hmm. And it's it's 15 minutes. It's one part of a lesson. And then he goes and rides his bike for a little bit. Like, really? That is how we're getting through. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also sometimes um, incentivization with uh, organic gummy bears or dairy-free chocolate chips. <laughs> wow, that's an impressive bar. We just binge on the crap at our house. Yeah. <laughs> Cattle corn. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. need to send my kids to your house for some help. <laughs> Morks, what's helping Abigail? Yeah, I think, Jamie, as I'm listening to you, one of the things that strikes me that is validating where we've gotten to with Abigail that took us a long time is blessing their temperament mm-hmm. and really coming to um, validate the uniqueness of what they need because mm-hmm. it it is it simply isn't homeschool right we don't yeah. get to create it right. we're reacting to a system that wasn't made for what it's delivering mm-hmm. and that's pretty true to a lot of people whatever the system is so an example with abigail we're just learning to like listen and bless what does she need she's very extroverted in a home of people that are not extroverted. And so this is new to us. But to bless that she can have a phone and be on Zoom with a friend, a cousin, for a big part of her day while she's doing school, where we would just say, no, to have that is distracting or in game pigeon going on, these sorts of things. Like, it, because we can't wrap our heads around it, but we realized we were really not giving her room mm. to learn the way she needed to learn. Mm-hmm. Like one of the huge values in our home is tucking our kids in every night. And we've done that. My son is 16 and we tuck him in. We pray for him, lay in his bed, and mm-hmm. it's just special. Well, Abigail is a late night owl and she wants to stay up and either chat with friends or listen to an audio book and work on this blanket she's been making and we're all needing to go to bed. And so I've had to kind of crucify this thing of we put our kids to bed every night Mm -hmm. and bless her to put herself asleep Mm. and just to know me with a 13-year-old daughter, that's a great loss, but I can't stay up till 11 on weeknights and Mm -hmm. without being a vegetable the next day. And so to bless that evening, Mm -hmm. to understand there's boundaries that are healthy for her. She doesn't sleep with her phone in the room, Mm -hmm. but to just acknowledge there are things you need to thrive, many of which I don't understand. And so it looked like last night I was doing a teaching event online in my office and it's going to Dutch Brothers on the way home getting a drink that has too much sugar than I would want and going home and binging episodes of Survivor Mm -hmm. with her. I've never watched Survivor actually in my life until last night, but I had some repair work to do with missing her heart early in the morning. And when I asked the Holy Spirit, he said, let her stay up late, watch some TV Mm -hmm. and get her favorite drink. And part of me is just reeling inside saying, this is a school night. And and we had a sleepover last night, like on a school night. Mm. And God's just saying, bless her temperament. Mm. Give her permission and validate mm. her temperament. Mm. And, and Jamie, you were the one that said, mm-hmm. like, at the end of the day, can we preserve relationship, right? right? And that's what that's just been really helpful to me, Jamie, from you. It's like, what, what quality of relationship do I want with my children mm-hmm. when we come out of this new normal? Yeah. Versus they got their work done. They have to get their work done. They have to check off the boxes. Yeah, To um, that was a, a big revelation to me. And I can't take credit for it because I actually heard it on some podcast that I listened to from a from a homeschooling mom who was also a full time. She chose homeschooling, like, and she was she's works full time. And um, what I gleaned from that was, at the end of the day, the work doesn't matter, and nor do their grades really. Um, at the end of the day, like, how how how's your heart towards each other? How are you doing? And that particularly with my son, um, I had to reframe my expectations with him. Like I could focus on the loss and that he's potentially falling behind in some some ways um, from not getting the really consistent um, tutoring and uh, extra help that he gets in school. But what am I going to do about that? Like 
I'd rather have a relationship yes. with him. I'd rather come out of this school year saying we did the best that we could and we actually made some good memories. And, you know, if if we have to catch up sometime down the road, I, I'm just going to trust that there's grace there to do that. Yes. Um, because that's a that's a gentler place to live than in this um, kind of grasping and fear mm. and loss, like just living in the loss of of what our kids have had to experience this year. This applies to everyone that the last seven minutes of this, I'm sitting here as a spouse hearing bless their temperament, mm. accommodate. For their temperament. You know, when we're all, it, it, it's it, one of the tragic facts of 2020 was the rise of domestic violence yes. right. and divorce because husbands and wives who hadn't been used to spending all day together in their house or apartment yep. or condo and trying to get their work done and trying to educate their kids or facilitate, you know, distance learning, there's a lot of tension there. And, and to just say, wow. Bless the people you live with that bless their temperament mm -hmm. is such wonderful counsel. Mm -hmm. Accommodate for it. And and then what you guys were just talking about, preserve relationship. Preserve the relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not about the work mm -hmm. in the end. It's about the relationship. Mm -hmm. But that applies to everybody right now. Like that is yes. that's so valuable. So I want to thank you mm -hmm. for coming in and and I I have a hunch we're going to do this a, about every 6 weeks. Yes. <laughs> I, I I I think this was helpful yeah. to a lot of listeners and so we'll be back gang. I know you've got I know you've got a lot of questions and well wait, how are you handling, you know, mm -hmm. this and that. We'll be back with more because this this was rich. So Jamie Morgan, thanks. That was super helpful. You're welcome. It's great. It's an honor. Thank you. Yeah. 